Hey everyone, Mike Burke here with InsideRealEstatePhotography.com and in this video I'm going to go over my preferred way for editing exterior real estate photography photos in order to achieve the highest quality results. So this video is sort of a part two on the last video I did, which was on shooting exterior real estate photos. I'll link to that video up on the screen right now. I got a lot of comments and questions on that video about how I edited the final edited images that were seen in that video. So that's what the subject matter of this video is gonna be. So I do have a previous video on my channel about editing exterior real estate photos, but that was a bit of a different methodology. That was by auto merging HDR brackets and then editing that merged photo in Lightroom. No real Photoshop involved, a more simplistic process. In this video, we're gonna be doing all hand blending and using more Photoshop based editing. And this is the method that I use on a day-to-day -day basis. It's a more high quality result. I've touched on a lot of what I'm gonna be talking about in this video, in other videos, but they were all separate videos and I think it's beneficial for me to make this video and just kind of have everything all in one video so you can see the process, which includes sky replacements, even grass replacements. A lot of people were asking about that in the last video. I know that's sort of a controversial thing, but uh, we're gonna be covering all that sort of all in this one video instead of many different videos. So I thought I'd condense all this into one video and show you what my basic process is for editing my exterior real estate photos. All right, so without further ado, let's jump right into it. All right, so here we are in Lightroom. I have my image here that we're gonna be editing. Here's all the brackets. These are five brackets, two stops apart. So as I mentioned in the last video about shooting exterior images, five brackets, two stops apart, probably overkill for exterior photos. You don't need that much information, but that's the setting that I use to shoot my interior. So I don't bother changing the setting when I go outside. I just shoot it the same way, just keep things simple and straightforward. It's just more information that we're gonna need. Typically, I'll only use maybe two of the brackets. Sometimes you can get away with even using one single frame. So you don't need as much dynamic range information outside as you do in the interior. All right, so I'm just gonna highlight all these five brackets and then I'm just gonna control click on them and go to edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. All right, so now you can see down here all my brackets loaded as layers in Photoshop. I have my actions panel open here. I have HDR real estate photography actions. These are actions that I created myself. They're available for download. I'll have the link down in the description below if you're, in case you're interested in downloading those. I use them a lot for interiors as well. So, and I have another video on that as well too that I'll link to up on the screen right now. So just looking at this frame here exposure wise, it's a little dark here in the entranceway and around the landscaping here a little bit. I probably could just use a camera raw editor or Lightroom to adjust these shadows and everything and just use this one frame even. I could probably get away with that here, but I'm just gonna use a little brighter bracket and blend that in by hand just to get the exposure that I want for this image. So I'm gonna take this third bracket here, which is a brighter bracket. I'm just gonna bring this up to the top. As you can see here, this is a brighter bracket. So now I'm just gonna um, create a layer mask, a hidden black layer mask. So I have the action for that here, add black layer mask. So I'm just gonna play, that'll hide that. So now I want my brush tool over here, or you can just hit the B key. This is small, I just wanna make this pretty large brush. So I'm just gonna increase the size. You can increase the size by using your bracket keys up and down. I wanna make sure I have a a pretty soft brush. I'm gonna bring this down, you know, you can even make it zero, whatever, just as long as it's, you know, under 10% or so, a very soft brush. Flow, I want this to be around, you know, like four or 5% is good. You wanna make sure your foreground color is white because we're painting, painting on a black layer mask and we want that to show through. Now I'm just gonna brush in these areas that I, I feel are dark. Especially here, here. You know, sort of brighten up the whole house a little bit overall. So that's pretty good. Um, I'm just going to now highlight this top layer and I'm gonna to go to merge layers and that will just merge that layer down into the one beneath it. You know, maybe we can go a little brighter here in this entrance way here. So we can take this really bright bracket, bring that up to the top. Again, add black layer mask. I'm just gonna play. Again, with my brush here, I'm just gonna paint over this and brighten up this area just a little bit. All right, that's looking pretty good. So we used three brackets out of these. That's all I need really for, the, for this. And now this looks like a nicely exposed image to me. Uh, so I'm just going to highlight all these layers and go to merge layers, hit play. So that'll merge those down to one. Now what I wanna deal with is we got this blank gray sky here, which has no information in it whatsoever. Doesn't look too good, pretty boring. So let's do a sky replacement here. So I'm gonna go to edit and go down to sky replacement. 
So that'll bring up the sky replacement tool here in Photoshop, which is fantastic. And then if you look in here, I have my own inside real estate photography sky replacement pack here that I created myself. So in case you didn't know, I shot all these skies myself over the past year and a half or so and created my own sky replacement pack, which is available for download on my website. I'll have the link down in the description below. So this pack I created contains 20 different skies all shot for the purposes of using them in real estate photos just like this. So uh, I might go like a little wispy here. Yeah, something like that, I like that one. So I'm gonna choose this sky here. So we have these parameters here that you can change. I don't really mess with too much of this. I might, uh, might brighten it up a little bit. Something like that, a little bit brighter. This lighting adjustment slider, I will adjust this. This sort of uh, messes with the foreground lighting of the scene sort of manipulates it to try to match it more to the sky you're, you're using, but I tend to keep this pretty low or even off in my real estate photos. I'm just gonna hit okay. So you'll see here now we have this sky replacement group layer here. Now I'm just gonna highlight that and create a layer mask. So now we have this white layer mask because as you'll see, like it sort of can bleed over on this white here and make it look bluish a little bit. So I don't want that. So I'm just gonna get my brush tool here and I wanna make my brush hard, so I'm just gonna go like even 100%, and I want my flow to be 100%. And I want my foreground color to be black this time since we're using a white layer mask, and I'm just gonna you know, get rid of some of this blue here. So I'm just gonna like click here, and I'll kind of shift click up here. I just don't want this white trim to look blue, so I'm just gonna to try to get rid of some of this. Even on the house here, it's it, it really just, it kind of bleeds over on a lot of stuff here, so. You can just make your brush really big here and get rid of some of this on here. And again, over here, obviously we got a lot of blue here, so I'm gonna get rid of some of that. And just clicking and shift clicking will make a straight line here wherever you click, and then if you click down here, say we would just make a straight line down this area too. No Siri, I don't wanna to talk to you right now. All right, so that sky's looking great, I'm happy with that. So I'm just gonna select these layers now and go to my merge uh, layers action here, hit play. Now at this point, I'm gonna actually save this image. The reason I'm doing that is now in Lightroom, we're gonna have a version of this now here to edit in a minute without any grass manipulation. The reason for that is if I do do a grass replacement or enhancement, <laughs> I will always send the client the version with, with it or without it. Some people may want it, some people may not. So if, if this is something you do automatically, I would definitely send both versions or it could be by request basis agent may say hey can you you know make the grass look a little greener or whatever because you know this time of the year here in New Jersey at least the grass looks like crap so uh, you know it's very brown yellowish it will be green in the summertime of course you know by doing a grass replacement it may even look better than it actually is I know this is a sort of a controversial topic some people may hate this or whatever I do just get requests for it so this is something that I do do for clients here and there but again, I send both versions so they have a choice whether to use it or not. All right, so before I do anything with the grass here, I'm gonna make my Lightroom tweaks here first. So nothing crazy here, just some light tweaks. So I'm gonna go a little exposure bump maybe, shadows, uh, maybe a tad. I'm definitely gonna add clarity into this around like 25. Uh, I could even add a little bit of vibrance to it just makes the colors come out of the brick and the sky in a little bit. It does look like it's a little crooked as well. So I'm gonna go down to um, the transform here. I'm just gonna hit auto. That'll straighten out your verticals and you know straighten out your horizon or, or horizontal lines. So you can see the difference there. It just straightened it out a little bit. I could tell it was sort of looking a little crooked. I must have been a little unlevel when I shot that. Uh, but that looks much better. So that's all I'm really gonna do for uh, Lightroom adjustments here, Lightroom tweaks, light tweaks. So that's the difference, just not not a lot, just uh, 
you know, just added to that little bit of enhancement here at the end. So now I'm happy with my Lightroom tweaks. I'm gonna create a virtual copy of this image. So I'm just gonna make sure that's highlighted and then we're just gonna control click or right click on it and go to create virtual copy. So that'll create a copy of this image here. And now on this copy of this image, I want to uh, do my grass replacement. So I'm going to control click or right click on this one now and go to edit in Adobe Photoshop. I'm gonna edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments. All right, so that will open this photo up now in Photoshop. So now I just wanna open the photo I'm gonna use for my grass replacement. I made a folder for this video and I stuck it in there. So that's where I'm gonna grab it from. Uh, here I have a grass photo. Uh, so this is our grass photo that we're gonna use. So a lot of people ask me where I get these grass photos. I bought this one from a stock photo site. I've bought a few of these from different stock photo sites over the years. I have a folder now of these that I use for my real estate photos. So that's where I would suggest going to is a stock photo site to get these. All right, so I'm just gonna double click on this background layer and then I'm just going to command click on it to select it. And I'm going to cut this command X or control X if you're on Windows. And I just wanna paste it into our um, photo here that we're using onto another layer. So I'm just gonna paste this. As you can see, it's filling up the whole entire frame here, which is great. We want a high resolution photo for this, obviously. Um, so now I just wanna get this into a position. As you can see, the grass gets smaller as it goes back here. So, you know, you wanna kind of, you know, put this in, obviously we wanna cover all the, all the grass area here. So we, you know, we want it to be, uh, you know, at least like this high, so. Uh, somewhere around here is good. Obviously this is like neon green too. We're gonna have to adjust the uh, color of this to make it look decent and not like uh, toxic, whatever. <laughs> so it's just way too bright green. Uh, so what I wanna do here on this layer now is hide this into a, a layer mask. So I'm gonna go to add black layer mask action that I have and hit play. So that'll hide that. And now I want white as my foreground color since we're using a black layer mask. I want my brush again. So I'm gonna hit the B key or you can get your brush over here. I wanna soften this down again. I don't want 100%, but it doesn't have, I don't want it to be like all the way soft. So I'm gonna go around like 80% and flow, I want my flow still to be 100. Wherever I paint now, it's just gonna bring that grass in. So, you know, you just go over all the grass areas here. And since you're using, somewhat of a soft brush that has a soft edge to it. So I would just use a big brush real quick and you know, go over you know, the main areas. And then I'll just zoom in here a little bit now with the smaller brush and kind of just get the edges. So you can even click there and then just shift click up here. That looks pretty good overall, you get the idea. Obviously now we have to uh, deal with the color of this because it's just way too toxic green looking. Um, so with this layer selected, I wanna go to filter, camera raw filter. And here you'll see similar editing tools as you would in Lightroom. So this should be pretty familiar with to you if you haven't seen this before. So I'm just gonna kind of bring down the highlights of this, bring down the shadows. Exposure down a little bit. Actually bring the vibrance down a little bit, maybe a tad. Even the saturation down a little bit. And then next, if we go to color mixer here, you'll have these sliders here. Luminance, I'm gonna take this here. You can mess with the luminance a little bit, make it darker. So that's good. You can even, you know, mess with the hue here again with this, you know, if you want it more yellowy or bluish, you know, uh, it's just kind of adjusting this to your eye to make it look like it should. I mean, I think that's somewhere, somewhat in the neighborhood. So I'm just gonna hit okay. 
and as you can see yeah that's a much nicer color it's not like toxic green it's more of a nice lush green grass color looking um, so one other thing I like to do here is mess with the opacity you, you could blend this you know together uh, with the existing grass you know as much as you want you know you don't have to go you know full-on effect here if you don't want you can you know adjust the opacity here I'll bring it down a little bit just to like let the natural grass shine through a little bit that gives it a more natural looking thing too. You know, somewhere around 80% maybe looks good. So that's blending a little bit more with the existing grass, giving it a little bit more of a natural look. I think that's why this is sort of controversial. People think this looks super fake and you know, it does have a bit of a fake look to it. I mean, so take it what you will. You either like this or you don't. This is definitely not necessary, but again, people request this from me. So this is something that I do do for people. So take it take it or leave it. Say you wanted to adjust the opacity, of, you know, say maybe this over here, this area like looks a little too over the top for you. You know, you can take a brush here with the, with the uh, layer mask selected. I'm just gonna up the size. And then if you, um, you know, reduce your flow here now to something low like 4%, and you have black as your foreground color now, and you paint over this, you know, this will reduce sort of the opacity of this a little bit. And, you know, blend it a little bit more with the original in certain sections, like this section too, a little bit, since it's sort of in a shadowy area too, so it'll darken it. Just make it look a little bit more, more natural. I mean, you could, you could, you know, blend this a little bit here and there too, just kind of give it a more natural, look to it just make it a little bit not so perfect so you know use your discretion here all right so that's pretty much it for the grass replacement that looks pretty decent to me i'm just going to you know select these layers go to merge layers hit the play button okay so now i'm just going to save this image now if we go back to lightroom so now we'll have our two images here you know one with with the grass replacement one without so now we have both versions here so this image is more or less pretty much good to go. I'm just, the last step I would do, you know, is just add some sharpening here in our detail panel here. I'm just gonna raise the sharpening. You can see, I just, I just look at the zoomed in thing here and just until these details, you know, that's zero. I just wait to see these details really start to pop out. So, you know, usually I'm around like 70. You can really see the details coming out there. You could sync these two, but I'll just do the same here for this one. I'm just gonna do 70, it was actually 71, whatever. So now these both have the same sharpening on it. So these images are good to go. They'll be ready for exporting. All right guys, so that's my basic process for editing my real estate exterior photos to get the highest quality result. I would just repeat this process for the rest of them. You know, no need to go through all of them, obviously. It's just the same process over and over again. But hopefully that illuminated you on how I go through this process. I know I had a lot of questions on my last video, so I hope that answered a lot of your questions. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. I really appreciate your support. Thanks so much, and I'll see you again soon on the next one.